variables and loops are not the reason you got into coding, at least not for me. It's so you can make awesome projects by yourself to share with other people, and that's exciting. Today, we are making a program to detect arrow keys in Java. And if you watch this video all the way to the very end, you'll have a fully working program. What's up, it's Alex back again, helping you learn Java. On this channel, I make Java tutorials just like this every week for beginners. So if you're new here, then consider subscribing. Are you ready? Because I am ready for this. This is gonna be a fun one. First things first, we're gonna start our new Java project from scratch. We'll just go to File, New, Java Project. We'll name it, um, say something cool like arrow key detector, hit OK. Next, go to your project, expand it, and go to the source folder, right click it, navigate to new class. We'll call it uh, arrow keys, OK, public static void main, that's the only checkbox you need, and then hit finish. Java has this great thing that's built in for us that'll bring out a window. Once you click this run button, it'll bring up a window like a GUI, G-U-I, that stands for graphical user interface, like any program. Like I have these programs here, like uh, OBS, uh, Notebook, Discord. These are all programs that like, you click on it and it brings up a new window. Java has something for that, it's called Swing. And I'm gonna show you how we can use that today to bring up a window for our program. First, we're gonna make something like a method. It's called a constructor. I haven't gone over this channel, but you don't really need to know what it is yet. Just type public and we'll say arrow keys, which is the name of our class, some parentheses and curly braces. Next, take this name, go into your main method and type new arrow keys the parentheses, and then a semicolon. It kind of looks like how you would make something like an array list. You would say like array list, um, a equals new array list. You see this new array list. You see new, a name, and then parentheses. That's just like this new name parentheses, except we made our own. So what's gonna happen now that we did this is when we click the green run button, it'll go into the main method and then it'll hit this code, new arrow keys. This will have the code to create a new window, pop it up, and that's gonna be in here. So we don't have to worry about this anymore. We can just work inside here and everything will run smoothly. Once that new program window is up, we're gonna type on our arrow keys and then we'll detect whether we press the up arrow key, the left arrow key, the right arrow key, or the down arrow key. And then for each of the four arrow keys, we'll keep a count of how many times you pressed it. So the first step is to bring up the window. I mentioned Java having this thing called swing. It's code built for us so that we can achieve things like this. The window, the frame, is called a JFrame in swing. So we'll just type JFrame. We'll name it something like frame, that makes sense. And we'll say equals new JFrame. Make sure that the J and the F are both capital. There are some red underlines here. This just means we need to bring swing and the frame into our project. So hover over it and type import JFrame, javax.swing. That will add an import statement to the top, meaning bring that code in so that we can use all this lovely code that you already wrote for us. We have a yellow underline here. That just means we have to use it. So type frame and we're gonna set it up. Some things we have to do are set it visible. So we would do frame dot to bring up what this J frame can do. And we'll start typing set visible and put true in there. You don't have to remember all this setup because it can be easily found on the internet or in this video. Next, we wanna set it up with something else. We'll do dot set default close operation, you can just hit enter and that'll finish it for you. And in these parentheses type capital JF frame dot and then capital exit on close. And then you can just hit enter and that'll auto fill for you. This first property just sets the GUI to be visible and the second one says what happens when you click the close button. It sends this little status, which is 
probably just like an integer and this status will tell swing to just close the window. Next, we wanna see how big it's gonna be, how big the window gonna be. It's gonna be really big, gonna be really small. We can do that by just typing frame dot set size and I'll do 400 by 400. That sounds reasonable. These are both in pixels. Lastly, to let it know that we can click on it, I think this is what it does. So you can click on it and set it focused is dot set focusable, focusable, and then put true in there. Okay, if we save this and run this, we get a window popping up and it's 400 by 400 pixels. Now, if we close it, we can close it because we've set everything up properly. I'll just run it again and let's just kind of visualize what we want going on here. We have to add elements to this little window. We can add things like labels, buttons, um, sliders. This is how apps are made. They have something similar. It brings up like a phone emulator window and you drag and drop the buttons on, add animations, graphics, like pads to pictures, and that's how graphics are made. It's really, really interesting stuff. But for now, we're just gonna have labels. And I'll probably do buttons or anything else you want in a separate video if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. But now, let's just organize four labels. We have one for up, a label for right, left, and down. So we can kind of see, we just kind of want to put them anywhere. It doesn't really matter right now. So we'll close it and set up those labels. On top of the frame, we have to put something called a panel. It's kind of just another box, invisible box. So we would do, it's called J panel, like this, I'll name it panel, equals new J panel, just like we did with the frame. Hover over it and click import J panel. We're gonna be using a lot of things from this swing library. Notice how that added another import statement here. If we wanna use just the entire swing code to help us with the GUI and not have to import every time into our project, we can just do it one time with an asterisk, javax.swing.asterisk. And that just means, you know, just get the entire code. Give me all of it. I don't want the, just the J frame or just the J panel. Just give me all of it so I can use all of it. So we have our panel and on the panel, we want four labels. And guess what those are called? Yeah, good naming, right? So we'll say up equals new J label, just like before. We don't have to do an import statement here. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Did I spell it wrong? Yeah, you gotta be careful. This has to be uppercase. But like I was saying, we don't need to hover over and do import J level because we're importing everything. So I'm just gonna copy this three more times for the other arrow key labels. We'll say down, left, and right. Left, right, left, right. Now that we made everything, let's kind of glue them together. Do panel press dot to see what this J panel can do for us. It's got something called add, and then we can just add each label. So we'll add up, which is a J label, onto our J panel. And we'll do panel.add down, and then panel.add right, panel.add left. We don't really know where these labels are being plopped onto the panel yet, but we'll see in a second. Now that we have all four labels on our panel, we need to put the panel on the frame. It's kind of confusing and we'll get to see everything in a second. Just do frame that add panel. Okay, let's save it. I'll shut up and we will look at this beautiful thing. Nothing is on there. Why is nothing on there? It's because we didn't set the labels for anything. The labels are just blank. See, there's no text on these labels. So we can go down here. We'll start with up. We'll do the up label dot to see what we can do with the J label. And we can say set text like that. And we could say something like uh, up a colon and then like uh, a zero for now, since we haven't pressed any arrows yet. 
just copy and paste it. Um, do it for down, left, or right, and left, and change these as well. And left, save it, run it. And now, hopefully, in a second, yeah, so now we get to see all four labels slapped onto this panel, slapped onto this frame. And it's not the prettiest, but hey, at least it's on there. It looks like it kind of put them in the middle and then did it in order of how we added them. In mobile app development or any program development, um, there are different layouts like adding boxes and then um, having like columns and rows and that's how apps and GUIs are created. So this is great. Um, it doesn't actually detect our arrow keys yet. So when we do our arrow keys, my keyboard is kind of funky. It doesn't have arrow keys. Uh, instead, I have to click the function button and then these, um, but it's not detecting them. And the big trick to detect keys in Java is called a key event listener or just a key listener. So we'll add that and we'll start changing these numbers based on how many times the keys are pressed. I'll just make this a little bigger. bigger. Um, we wanna do something with our frame. We want to make the keys be noticeable by the frame. So we'll type frame dot to see what we can do with that J frame. And you're gonna, gonna, ty gonna wanna type add key listener with a capital K and a capital L. Now you're gonna have a red underline here that's okay, we're gonna fix it in a second. In these parentheses, type new key listener, just like this. Now hover over it and click import key listener. That brings this key listener, which um, is the code to detect arrow keys into our program. Go to the end of key listener, type some parentheses, and then curly braces. Now you'll see a red underline just hover over it and click this add unimplemented methods. And a bunch of crazy stuff is gonna happen. It looks really confusing. It looks like you just jumped into a hacker movie. But what we're doing is we're taking the frame, we're letting it listen to these key presses, and we're going to specify what we wanna do with it. Like say, which keys do we wanna respond to? We can see if a certain key is typed, if a certain key is pressed or if a certain key is released. Right now we're gonna live inside of the key pressed here, create an integer, say int um, like key code equals e dot get key code. Now what this does is it takes this key event, like um, when you press the keyboard, it travels into your computer and stores it as this variable called key event and we're taking out the certain position on the keyboard. It had a little code with it. We're gonna see which code it is and then see if it was an arrow key or not. And that's stored into a key code. Now we're gonna see if it's up, down, left, or right. And to do that, we can just type uh, switch, switch, and then put key code inside of there. And then your curly braces. This is called a switch case. I've never uh, gone over this on my channel yet, but if I have, it'll be on the screen now so you can learn a little bit more about it. But it's pretty much like, it's like an if statement. An if statement's like, if this, then do this. And a switch case is really similar. So next, tab in and type case. I don't know why it didn't tab in. Then we could type key events dot key up. Hmm, I thought it was key up. Oh, it's um vk underscore up. And so this little guy here is like an integer. That's the code which is sent from the key on your keyboard. Instead of a semicolon, this has to be a regular colon. And we wanna say, if it's the up key, then we should do this stuff. And we'll just increment the counter for up. So we'll set the text up dot set text to that same thing except we'll make a counter. Um, we'll call it like up count and then put that up there. We'll say right now our up count is equal to zero and that's an integer. We'll say our down count is equal to zero and so are our right count 
and left count. Go back down. We're going to increment it by one by doing plus plus. This is actually an integer, so we need to convert it to a string to do that. Type capital integer dot to string and then put this in here. A little complicated, a little confusing looking, but it's going to be worth it in the end. Next type break with a semicolon that goes to the next case and the next case is down. So we can copy this. It's going to be the same thing. Key event dot VK down. That's a different number that maps to the down button. We'll say down dot sec text down increment the down count. Now we'll do right and left the same exact thing. Right, right, right for the label. Increment the right count. Left. I don't know why it's called VK. Probably stands for something. Oh, good insight, Alex. It probably stands for something. You're so smart. Ooh. Left um, and left count. Okay, got everything. And I think that's everything. So we'll save it. We'll see if we have any errors um, when we actually try to run it. See if it's supposed to do what it says. Click the run button. We get the window popping up. We have the labels come in after a second. Now I'm gonna click my arrow keys on my keyboard and see what happens. I'm gonna click left. Frick, and nothing happened. Okay, um, I'm gonna click left a few more times. Oh, okay, <laughs> good. So you have to press twice in order for it to stop working. My left is working. My up, yes, right, down, yes. And this is pretty sweet. We can now detect which keys are being pressed on the keyboard, and we can do so many cool things with that. Like you can make a game, like this is how games are made. They take the input from the keyboard, and then based on if you click a right, you move right on your screen. You probably call like the right animation or move this sprite object to the right a certain amount of pixels. But yeah, this is really the beginning of it all, and I'm glad you're here with me. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. I appreciate you being with me and I'll see you in the next video. Catch you later guys.